Hey everyone, welcome to this MTZ Insiders video. Today I have a very special guest. His name is Richard Mason and he is the creator of True Sidereal Human Design. A lot of you into human design likely know that they use the tropical system, but uh, over the past few months or so, um, uh, Richard has been creating this True Sidereal system that uh, incorporates into human design. So I'm very happy to have him here. And uh, thanks for being here, Richard. Great to be here. Awesome. So for those that don't know, what is human design in general? So human design is basically a synthesis of astrology with the I Ching, which is, if you don't know, is an ancient Chinese book of ethics, philosophy, and divination, and basically contains these 64 hexagrams, they're called, which are, you know, with uh, six lines each that basically signify a different principle of consciousness. And... Um, so basically human design is integrating that with astrology and using astrology to uh, link the planets' positions with the various gates of the I Ching, which appear on the human design body graph or chart, as I call it. And you have all the 64 gates in human design, they're called gates instead of hexagrams. It's the 64 gates of the I Ching located in different points of the body. And if, if those gates are activated by a planet, then they link up and then that activates these various centers you have, such as uh, you know, the, the head, uh, the heart, which correspond to the different chakras, which also are incorporated into human design. So basically it's this esoteric kind of synthesis that um, kind of, seeks to give like a complete description of your personality. So a bunch of different modalities, right? So it takes the astrology, takes the I Ching, kind of ties it together into that tree of life chakra type of system. Mm -hmm. And, um, and astrology is a very important component to that, right? This, that's kind of where everything's centered around is the astrology. Yes. Yeah, so um, the astrology is kind of used to basically come up with all the different calculations so and that's what some people a lot of people don't realize i think perhaps in human design because uh yeah maybe i don't know they haven't uh, necessarily read all the stuff out there because honestly it's kind of hard to find a lot of detailed information on human design but anyways um so basically astrology is used to make all the different calculations uh and so once I realized that, um, and once I discovered true studio astrology, which, you know, somehow I just happened to find your website, masteringthezodiac.com, and, um, you know, saw my true studio birth chart there, and, you know, kind of got this idea to uh, use true studio astrology instead of tropical astrology to make a human design chart. Um, so, and that it changes pretty much everything in the chart. Right. Because if the original, the mainstream human design is using tropical and this one now is using true sidereal, I mean, it's going to completely radically change everything, right? All the descriptions. Right. And you can just intuitively think about this to get a grasp about how much it would change uh, by thinking about how your sun sign would changes, you know, from tro tropical to true sidereal, it usually changes for most people about one sign. Uh, they become the sign that comes before the sign they are in tropical it's, that's the sign they'll be interested here right and uh so human design in human design your so-called sun gates which is the hexagram that is activated by the sun uh describes about 70 percent of your personality so you can you can kind of imagine how if, if your sun sign is different like from a aries to a pisces whoa that's kind of a big difference right like it, you know it's going to show up in the in the human design chart you know <laughs> right but it's the whole thing too because like your hexagrams would change as well the body graph would change as well is that right yeah all of it all of it changes for almost interesting everybody. so then what is so what is human or yeah so what does human design in general show like it, it's showing some personality stuff but it goes deeper with that right yeah, not only does it purport to describe your overall personality, but it also gives you um, like tools like what um, authority should you listen to? For example, should you follow your emotions or should you follow your instinct? 
or your intuition more, you know, stuff like that. Or it even describes like what environment you're, you're best, uh, you best like feel comfortable in or um, like what kind of uh, people or how many people you uh, are gonna be happy being around during the course of the day, most likely. Uh, so it really gets deep into like the everyday kind of uh, behaviors a person can have or uh, the people a person can interact with and, and kind of give a person guidance or direction towards improving their own environment. Uh, and some life path it, stuff in there. Yeah, it, it even kind of uh, describes what kind of diet you should eat as well if you get really deep into it. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so, wow. and, and, and that's how a lot of people have actually come to see that the, the true sidereal chart, human design chart is actually, actually fits them a lot better because it does describe those very, very detailed, in-depth, everyday environment kind of things that you would be better off in and and people can you know see that around them yeah you know? right and then there's a spiritual component too you're mentioning some stuff we we're talking earlier about sort of the more unconscious or spiritual side of it too because i know with like astrology a lot of it is kind of ego centered in the sense it's our personality and yeah you can get some stuff about you know the unconscious mind but it, and it can go deep with spiritual stuff but not natively but i think uh human design natively kind of splits those right like you have the physical self and also the spiritual self yeah well um yes in a way it, it is the the physical and uh, spiritual self uh in human design it's it's the the physical self is called the design side and the more spiritual self is called the personality side uh and yeah, you'll see the, like the red and uh, black lines in a human design chart, which describe those separate aspects. And also in human design, there's like two astrological calculations, one at the time of your birth and one that comes about three months before your birth. And that's how those two things are determined more or less. So one way, yeah, one way to think of a human design chart is basically two different astrology charts like coming together in a way. Um, like mirrors kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because they even like relate to each other in the human design, right? Like how the, the, the design self and the personality self interact. Yeah, it describes exactly how they connect and then they activate centers once they do connect uh, the different uh, lines or, you know, different sides of the awesome. self, uh, for sure. Nice. So then what did you do? What was the uh, process here for changing this very dynamic system. Yeah, so it it did take a lot of uh, work to, you know, come up with this because I didn't realize like how much, um, how much goes into, you know, astrological calculations and uh, kind of the level of precision that's, you know, required to, to do all that. So yeah, at first I had to find a, um, a true sidereal ephemeris, which is, you know, the locations of the, of the planets. And it turns out there like not many of those exist. <laughs> right. So I had to make my own true sidereal ephemeris from a, from a tropical one. And uh, which I actually had that. And uh, for you to put on your website, I need to get that to you at some point. Uh, yeah. But um, so I had to do that. And then um I had to like kind of reverse engineer all the, you know, because human design, they don't, they, like nobody really publishes like how exactly all these calculations are done, like on, on a standard, standard chart and where all the things are derived from, because there's like a million things, right? So yeah. I kind of had to go through one by one and really like dive into the human design literature and kind of see how all these things are actually calculated, you know? And what the purpose not, of it, what, like what the purpose of each thing was to where it is and how it, exactly, why it was put yeah. where it was. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's wild. Yeah. So then the system is, is very different, but um, basically what you've done is, so you obviously kept the order of the I Ching. So you've kept it, you've kept the fundamentals of, of human design, yes. Yes. but you've now introduced this, the true sidereal. So the I Ching are now fitting in different spots of the zodiac is that right uh yes exactly and that's because so he, i've kept the same starting point uh because yes first of all there's two wheels uh basically in human design there's the astrological wheel 
which is the same as in astrology. And then over top of that is overlaid the hexagram wheel, which shows the 64 hexagrams. And that shows how they, how they link up, uh, you know, the positions of those two wheels. So right. I basically just replaced the tropical zodiac wheel with the true sidereal zodiac wheel. So and, it starts uh, at the same place. So the first, where it would normally be the first I Ching to Aries mm -hmm. is still the, the first I Ching to Aries in this system. But now yes. because the constellations are different sizes, that's now changing the... Uh, yes, because of that is why the hexagrams will fall into different signs because the size of the signs are different and also the number of signs is different as well. Right. So... Uh, Yes, and also there's the fact that, um, you know, in true sidereal, the, um, basically there's like a 30 degrees offset from tropical astrology in terms of the precession of the sun and all that. So, although that's not re really reflected in the, uh, in the wheel, that's kind of taken into account in the calculations just the procession the procession yeah, the changes procession. and everything yeah yeah because that's constantly changing so that means right. your 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 system has to be constantly changing with the uh, procession there interesting so then so because the ching is now fitting with different signs and normally in, in the mainstream you know human design the I Ching would fit right it would like you would you would hear a description about a certain I Ching and that would fit with say Virgo and that would make sense so now that they're different do you still see the I Ching's corresponding with these new sign associations yeah absolutely and although some people would like to debate me on that and it is debatable but uh, in my opinion actually the correspondences seem even stronger with the true sidereal hmm. uh, zodiac uh, you know, and also there's some like crazy coincidences, like, for example, Ophiuchus, which is the, the new constellation that's added in the true sidereal wheel, it actually coincides with the start of the first hexagram of the I Ching, coincides with the start of Ophiuchus. So, you know, that seems like more than a coincidence to me. Um, there's also several other examples, like, for example, the uh, Aquarius. The end, or maybe the start, I don't remember, of Aquarius actually corresponds to the 13th hexagram, which is very funny because the whole number 13 is kind of, you know, what the different, you know, like 13 zodiacal signs versus 12. And you know, so I thought that was and kind that of that is a, well. That's and an Aquarian, Aquarian thing. Aquarius, you know, is coming, you know, so. <laughs> well, and, well, and Aquarius is always different, right? And it's always yeah. challenging the status quo. I mean, if anything, true said Dario and all this weird stuff was Aquarian. Very interesting. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you, I, I wanted to just uh, uh, reiterate something you said. So you said that a fucus um, is where the beginning of the I Ching is, which mm -hmm. is very interesting. We talked about this earlier too, is that uh, for those that don't know, a lot of astrologers will use a fucus as the beginning of the Zodiac. And the reason is, is because that's where the galactic center is. And the galactic center is the, you know, the, the center of the galaxy. So whenever you see a planet pass through the galactic center, it's always very transformative, right? That's why Scorpio to Fucus deal with transformation. Because you, you go through this rebirth after you come out the other side of the galactic center into Sagittarius. So to place you know, the I Ching or anything at the beginning of a Fucus makes a lot of sense because that could be considered the beginning of the Zodiac. You know, We think Aries because that's like the more initiating starting point. But if we're dealing with spirituality in terms of a death and a rebirth and ending and a beginning, I mean, it would definitely be the galactic center. So it's very interesting that it just happened to correspond that way by lining up the I Ching the way it was intended to be originally, but now with this new true sidereal system. Yeah, and I didn't even uh, know anything about that or, you know, know that some astrologers would consider, you know, off you to be... A around the star of the zodiac either I, you know it i just saw it and it seemed to like be like whoa like you know this new constellation i just added in just happens to of course you know directly line up with the first hexagram like what yeah uh, you know That's wild. um yeah yeah so so you've been getting feedback i'm sure so you've obviously found it and i did it as well and i found it super accurate but you've been getting some feedback as well. Does it seem like generally people are resonating more with the true sidereal system? 
Yes, like almost, you know, I'd say like 90% of people who, who have used it, like, and who are open to it and, uh, you know, don't have a preconceived uh, desire to not like it or not want it to work, do actually find it to be more accurate. And, and, and just to speak a bit more about the spiritual side, the spiritual significance of true sidereal, um, I think that is where you know, this new cosmic human design chart gets some of its power from it. And the, the fact that true Sadio is a more spiritual type of astrology in, in many ways and spiritual in, in the sense that you can really feel the resonance to those energies. It, it's less intellectual, less logical, more feeling, more, you know, you, you can really sense that this is like, true on a deep level kind of uh feeling yeah. which is the same response we get about true sidereal and the true sidereal community <clears throat> those coming from tropical into true sidereal have that same experience where you know we i still think tropical is accurate a lot of people still find you know it accurate and very valuable but it seems like the true sidereal system speaks on a more fundamental soul essence level in the astrology system so it sounds like you're seeing the same thing with the human design yeah, and in human design, I believe could actually offer some explanation for why that's true, because in human design, the whole reason why astrology is used to make these calculations of the hexagrams is because human design uh, believes that there are these neutrino, well, there are neutrinos, but it believes neutrinos, which are particles in light, basically, are responsible for passing energy when they pass through a planet to us, for example, on the day of our birth, that that energy, that's how it gets transferred is basically through light. So in true sidereal, since the planets are lining up basically with the light that is coming in because, hey, look, a planet is where it's supposed to be, where it actually is, you know, and that's the chart we're actually using, right? Because we have that information, maybe that uh, actually does have some extra information we weren't getting before. And that is why that it really feels so resonant, you know, yeah. because it lines up with this light, basically. And this I Ching, all of it, like the I Ching system was formed for a certain reason in, the, in that order, let's say. And so that order is going to correspond with the nature, with the natural world. Right? Exactly. Yes. Yes, exactly. Awesome. And that's one of, the, I believe, the strongest arguments actually for why true sidereal is is uh true is because it does you know line up with nature um yeah wow all right so uh you guys are all probably wondering how you can take a look at this so he's got an online calculator which is awesome uh it's called cosmichumandesign.com cosmichumandesign.com i'll put a link down below in the description um i looked at it for myself like i said extremely accurate uh but I have to say it was a little bit uh, confusing to see all these different descriptions because I'm not, you know, familiar with human design terminology and, and the whole layout. Um, so is there a place people can get some extra resources? So they'll go there, they'll, they'll see all the placements and then uh, where could they get some extra resources to kind of understand more about those placements? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm with you. I believe that a lot of the standard human design nomenclature is a bit uh, difficult to decipher. And uh, so, but I just kind of was in a rush to get the site done. So I just kind of put everything up there as, as it appears, you know, Which is on cool. different sites and uh, in the literature. But I do have a, uh, a guide of sorts on the Facebook group, Cosmic Human Design Facebook group that explains in, in pretty good detail, I think, what each of the different fields on the chart mean at least. And uh, yeah, I'm working to make that clearer in general for people who just like normal people who maybe haven't spent 10 years in human design, <laughs> you know, to, to be able to understand that. So definitely. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Cause that's uh, yeah. Cause it gets very deep too. So this is all in your Facebook group. So we're going to put all the links down below. So cosmic human design.com will be below. The Facebook group is where you have these, uh, these, was it PDFs, these uh, descriptions? Yes. Uh, you can find it on the Facebook group. Okay. And that's also by the same name, Cosmic Human Design. Yes. All right, cool. So we'll put those links, but yeah. And then you also have a YouTube channel as well and everything's under Cosmic Human Design. So I think if people Googled it, they'd probably right. find all this, right. right? Okay. Absolutely. 
All right, awesome. So we'll conclude it here. But um, yeah, Richard, thanks so much for being on. This is a huge, for me, it's a huge like progress in the whole evolution of like personal development because, you know, I, I personally, obviously I'm biased, but I would love to see True Sidereal incorporated with everything. So I think it's a huge <laughs> step to see, you know, it incorporated into human design, which is a great system and very widely used. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for that contribution. And uh, yeah, definitely check it out, guys. Links are down below. And uh, yeah, have a great one, everyone. Thanks again, Richard, for being on. Thank you. Let's see you next time. See ya.